So, you've decided the jungle life needs a touch of luxury, huh? Well, I'm here to guide you through the perils of creating prime real estate in the heart of the jungle. There will be three parts to this video. And first, I'll explain the differences between tree houses, land houses and floating houses. And second, I'll share how I choose the best location for my base. And in the third, I'll go over structures available in the game and present a handy guide for you that will help you set your priorities straight. Feel free to make use of the chapters I've added to the video. So first, you have to decide what you want to build. There are currently three options, a tree house, a floating house and a house without a floor that may spawn demonic creatures if you choose the wrong spot. To be frank, you don't have to build a base in this game in order to survive. But here are a few reasons you might want to. A. You want to have a central location for your resources or you just don't like the idea of losing all your resources to log eating, leaf devouring or gobbling centipede. B. You want to feel safe when you tend to your wounds after collecting bites from every single creature in the forest. C. You want to have bases all around the map so that you can say you've conquered the Amazon jungle. With those noble reasons in mind, let's see the differences of each type of housing. So land houses can be built anywhere, but they require flat ground, and if there's some plant or rock face sticking out, you may not be able to build there or add another floor. They also don't have any foundation, so the ground floor is literally the ground floor here. As opposed to their land counterparts, floating houses have floors, but can only be built from bamboo. You're unlikely to face food or water shortages, as there's always plenty of resources by the water. Natives and wild beasts will also not be a problem if you are smart about how you make entrances. They won't be a problem in tree houses either, as neither can climb in this game. The only problem with tree houses is that they are extremely tedious to build and can only be placed on the large Brazil nut trees. On the flip side, these trees produce indigo blue Liptonia, which is the best consumable sanity in this game. Now, I will not tell you the single best location where to build your base, as this will be dependent on game mode, difficulty, the goal of your base and your playing style. But one of the things you should consider is raw material availability when planning your new home. There are a few resources that are a pain to carry, even with a sled, so the base you're planning to build should ideally reflect its environment. Say, if you want to build your luxury house from mud, make sure to have some water nearby as you will go nuts getting all those mud bricks to your base deep in the jungle. Next, check for availability of medicinal plants. You don't want to die because you ran out of lily dressing and could not find any nearby. There's anecdotal evidence that collecting resources in one place spawns more of the same resource, and even if it's not true or is changed in future updates, you would still be placing yourself in an environment where these plants tend to appear. If you're all set with plants, see what type of food is nearby. Any passive creatures are great to have around for protein, so if you settle next to tapers, for example, you won't have to bother with husbandry as they will spawn right next to you and are easy to kill. I found protein to be the easiest to find as there will always be some bird on the ground, a puma that will attack you or just some random passive animal foolish enough to approach you. Carbs and fats, however, are harder to stumble upon so any of the following resources are good to have nearby so that you can satisfy your needs in a pinch. Okay, you've decided on the base and location. Now you want to know what to prioritize in your build. First, frames. They are needed to build walls and platforms, which in turn can be used as roofs or flooring if you decide to go for multiple stories, which you should to escape the claws of jaguars and red aggressive men that have not yet learned to climb ladders. Just like with other base structures in this game, there are two types, bamboo and log frames. There is no difference in function. Once you build a frame, you can attach walls and the platform to it, but be aware that there is no point in walls in this game. They are purely aesthetic. If you want to, you can spend all the resources in the world to build them, but just know that pumas, jaguars, snakes and everyone else in this game is a rebel and rejects your reality. 
If you intend to build a second floor, do not build out of palm or banana leaves as you will simply fall through. To get to your second floor, you'll have to build a ladder, but those are awkward to use and if you build more than two floors, there is a non-zero chance you will fall from your ladder and injure yourself. So it's a good idea to build more than one and space them apart. Now, walls and platforms can also be built from mud. To unlock the blueprints for mud walls and roofs, you first have to go to any water body and gather mud. But be wary that you will get dirty from handling the mud and you will need to clean yourself often. Apart from smearing mud onto your walls and flooring, there are other uses for mud too. But before you get to any of them, you have to acquire mud bricks with the help of mud mixer. So build one as close to water as possible. The mud fireside wall is only useful for saving space in your home. It does not provide any advantages over the campfire. For clay items, the pottery table is not very useful in mid to late game as you will most likely have equivalent or superior items already. But it is needed to produce advanced metal items and tools that will increase your chances of survival and speed up resource gathering. All storage options are useful because they help you organize and keep your resources from disappearing to bugs. But don't focus on them too much when you don't have a steady source of food and water. Now, if you wish to advance your civilization a step further, you may want to entertain plant cultivation and husbandry. Planters are used for different flora and both have their uses. But you can check the fandom link in the description to see what plants grow in which planter. And as concerns husbandry, it's far from essential. It was added to the game in an update, so none of the animals are required for your survival and may, in fact, hinder it if you don't have a steady supply of food and water. Frog stretcher is only needed for getting poison darts to tranquilize animals and get them into your pants. Skip this if you're not doing husbandry yet. Oh, and uh, by the way, <laughs> don't tranquilize animals near water. Shelters. These are the mobile homes that you use for sleeping and saving. They have no place in your luxury home where you'll sleep in a bed and save by hovering over the platform above, just like this. There is supposedly a risk of getting worms if you sleep in these two beds, but I slept in a palm leaf bed for more than 50 days and never encountered a single one. Regardless, having a bed is essential, as then you'll rest better and will not get worms for sleeping on the ground. Pro tip by the way, if you are running out of energy, instead of letting your character drop, choose sleep from the menu. This way, you'll have control over how much you sleep and you're unlikely to get worms if you sleep only a short period of time. The difference between the campfire and regular fire is that it will burn a bit brighter and longer and you will have four spots for cooking instead of two. It will also produce charcoal that you can use in mud forge and you only use the stone ring to convert small fire into campfire. Mud charcoal furnace is only useful if you are speedrunning the game. If you take your time exploring and collect charcoal and campfire ash after burning fires, you don't really need it. Mud forge is required to make end game items and there are currently two types of recipes that you can use it for. Empty cans and iron ore to produce iron and molds to produce advanced armor and tools. I was a bit confused with the process myself, so here's a step-by-step -step guide, except I made a metal blade at the end here since I didn't have enough metal for the armor, but the process is the same.
The only food structure I find useful is the dryer. Meat will not go bad as long as it's on the dryer, so it's effectively a storage. You can leave raw meat here for the whole wet season for example, and it'll still be cured when the dry season comes. In the wet season, you don't need water buildings, because you can just drop some coconut shells on the ground and collect rainwater. However, for the dry season, if you don't live next to a water source, it's useful to prepare one water collector. You don't need water filters, because you can always just boil the water that you collect. Mud shower is also only needed if you live deep in the jungle, with no water sources nearby, as you can otherwise always just walk into water to clean yourself. If you live like a pig, then you'll start to get lots of parasites that will eat all your nutrients, so try to avoid that. There's nothing noteworthy I can say about animal traps, except that prawn trap is really hard to collect prawns from, so I don't really use it, and traps don't need any bait. Bow traps and spike traps are useful for killing natives, but I only ever build them as an afterthought. They're not a priority. Well, here's everything I have about structures. To summarize, I made this handy guide for you to refer to in your journey towards luxury life. Hopefully, with these tips you'll be able to conquer the green hell and become the proud owner of some prime real estate. Subscribe for my future videos where I'll spill the beans on how to bring capitalism to the rainforest and have the Yabohoaka tribe eagerly sign leases for your newly built condos.